Welcome to the show, everybody. Good morning. Enter the stars. Trump the Gemini is, in fact, Janice, and that's going to be the topic of today's show. Who is Janice, you may be asking? Well, Janice is the ancient Roman two-faced god. In fact, a gate or a wall was named after Janus. The gate was called the Ionus Geminus. This is it right here. Pictured on this coin. We're going to talk more about this gate later in the show. But I wanted to open the show with this. Because this is indicative of Trump's wall. Now. As we go through some of these points that seem to mirror the Janus Two-Face God. Understand that everything that I mention is referenced in this Wikipedia page for Janus. Okay, so I'm going to uh, reference this page throughout the show. Now, Janus' name means doorway or passages. Kind of like a time traveler. He was referred to as the beginning and the end of all things, knowing the past and the future. Janus could see into the past with one face and into the future with the other. He is actually referred to in this Wikipedia article as the master of time. Does this all sound familiar? Janus could be a double for Kronos, which of course is Saturn. You're going to see references of Saturn to Janus as we move through this live show. Do you remember the clock at the foot of Trump Tower? Remember this? Let's pull this up here. This is it right here. Let's look at images of the clock at Trump Tower. Well, there's more to this. And as we've talk to you about another shows the makers of back to the future way back in the 1980s they admitted that the biff character was based off of trump all the way back in the 80s when trump was nothing more than a millionaire at that time an up and comer but nonetheless they based an entire series off of this man almost as if they knew what was going to happen Here's the Trump Tower clock. This is all about time travel. Now, what else is going on with Janice and Trump? Well, there's a Biff reference in the Janice archetype. Yes, Biff. Same character from Back to the Future. In fact, the two faces... The way it's depicted of Janus is called the Bifrons. What you're looking at here is called the Bifrons. We're going to call it the Bifrons because that's what the intention was. And Bifrons means two faces. Now, not only is Janus called Bifrons, but Biff and Tannin are the names of demons. Let's take a look at that. Now, I'm going to link all of these pages that I have pulled up here in the pinned comment for after the show. So you can have proof of all this. This is what I believe the inspiration was for Biff, Janice, Bifrons, the two faces. And these are the two demons named after Biff Tannen. Here's Bifrons as Janice. So you can see the documentation for that. Bifrons is the two faces of Janus, the god of beginnings, transitions in ancient Roman mythology. Here is the list of theological demons. We have first Bifrons, and we have Tannin, Biff Tannin, from Back to the Future. And this is why they depicted Biff as Trump. Now here's the Bifrons demon. Remember this is Janus as well. A demon described in demonological grimoires. The lesser key of Solomon. As the 46th spirit. In the pseudo monarchia. 
demonium as the 47th spirit. Let's keep reading about Bifrons, the demon. That demon looks familiar because he's often depicted in some of these uh, horror films, right? With these razor sharp teeth, bald, no hair, with the eyes set wide apart. Some of these horror films seem to seem to depict this demon, okay? And it says here that it was mentioned in the dictionary Infernal. In these works, he described as an earl who initially appears as a monster before adopting a more human form. His duties include teaching arts and sciences, including astrology, geometry, and the properties of different plants and stones. He also moves bodies into different graves, lights candles over graves, and depending on the version, commands either 6, 26, or 60 legions of spirits. According to Rudd, Bifrons is opposed by Shemham Forash, Angel Ariel. So angel, that's the angel who controls this demon or keeps him in check. Here's the other demon. Now this is more like a monster. This is Tannin, Biff Tannin, remember? And this is actually the word used throughout the Bible, the Hebrew word for this Leviathan creature. It's a symbol of chaos and evil. The name may derive from a root meaning howling or from coiling in a manner like smoke. In modern Hebrew usage, the word tannin means crocodile. Tannin appears in the Baal cycle as one of the servants of Yam, defeated by Baal, or bound by his sister. He is usually depicted as serpentine, possibly with a double tail. There's that double reference again, right? The tannin also appears in the Hebrew Bibles of Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Psalms, Job, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah. They are explicitly listed among the creatures created by God on the fifth day of the Genesis creation narrative. Translated in the King James Version as Great Whales. The tannin is listed by the apocalypse of Isaiah as one of the sea beasts to be slain by Yahweh on that day. The dragon. So, these are the roots of Biff Tannin. I mean, the similarities are uncanny. Now, let's keep going with this because there's much more to this story. Janus was all things to all people, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Now, this part I'm going to actually search the page to show you the Apollo references, and there are many between Janus and Apollo and we this is important because obviously Trump's 66th floor Apollonic themed penthouse is all decked out in Apollo right so you're seeing the connections now and you're going to see that number reappear in this montage that I uploaded over the weekend we're going to show you that too this morning and Let's keep going with this. Apollo, ancient interpretations. Another etymological propo, etymology proposed by, by Nigidius Figulus is related by Macrobius. Janus would be Apollo and Diana Iana. More Apollo references. Solar God theories. Janus and Jana are a pair of divinities worshipped as Apollo or the sun and moon. Whence Janus received sacrifices before all the others, because through him is apparent the way of access to the desired deity. So, you see the Apollo references relating back to Janus as well. Now, we had already done a live show on Justinian, the, the ruler who built the Hagia Sophia Mosque, which is now at the forefront of the news. A letter was sent on the summer solstice to Trump pleading with him not to allow that to be turned into a mosque. It was a museum since the 1930s 
It is now turned into a mosque. They are now covering up all of the Christian iconography within the mosque as they do their prayers because they can't bear the sight of the Christian iconography. You're starting to see what the setup is now. Now, what you're about to see in this montage that we're going to play next was from 1995, and it's a 007 film. And in this film, there are twins, basically. The film is called GoldenEye, right? And GoldenEye was a film about Janice. Janice is the bad guy. He is 006 instead of 007. And he is first James Bond's friend, and then he turns against him, betrays him. And all throughout the film, he's reverenced to as Janice. Let's take a look at this. Break this down for you guys. Now, Pierce Brosnan at 66 years old. Remember, I told you to remember that number. Came out and said that Trump was doing a good job. Now, that's not the issue that I have with this. The issue that I have with this is his age. The 66 years old, this was all done. This is all a manufactured reality. This is how these people operate. Trump is doing a good job because he was paid to say Trump's doing a good job at the age that he's at so that it all fits into this matrix that these people create. Let's keep watching. So there's 006 and 007. Gemini. Now, what you just saw is Giannis, Janice, and he has this golden key. The golden keys, are, as you're going to see here, are prominent in the film. And there are two, just like the two faces of Janice. You're going to see two golden keys, which look like an eye. Now, Janus is also the god of borders, you know, like the wall. And back in those days, these borders were rivers. Janus was the protector of doors, gates, and roadways in general. And you could see it as these two symbols that he carried, the staff and the key. Here are some images of Janus carrying the staff and the key. Here's the key. And here is Janice with the key and the staff. So, watch this. Because during the uh, election last, or in 2016, Trump actually carries the key, right? And I can't remember the context by which he was carrying this key. But here it is. Trivializes international law. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump holds up a key to the city he brought on the stage with him as he speaks. This was March 7th, 2016 at a campaign rally in Madison. Interesting to use this prop, which is exactly what Janice carried with him. Can't make this up, you guys. Let's keep watching. There you see the two golden keys with the eye on them. Now someone notice that this card that pops out of here, obviously that's a hand print or a fingerprint scanner. It says, what does it say in here? It says six and a six. Someone said it said six, 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 but it only just says six, six. But it's still the 66 repeated over again. You're going to see this continue. The 
the two golden keys are pulled out of the eye. There's the Russian component to all this. Three, two, one. Well, at one point, we suspected Seven Eye might be the ground station for a secret space based weapons. Space based weapons. Program called GoldenEye, but. So that's GoldenEye, and it causes an EMP, as you're going to hear James Bond say. EMP. Go to cover the MiGs and the satellites and the blackout. The Yanis Group? Electromagnetic pulse, a first strike satellite weapon developed by the, uh... the Americans and Soviets during the Cold War. So, what do you know about Yanis? Zilch. Zips. No one's ever seen him. But the man's connected at the Gazoo. KGB, military. The son went to work for the government whose betrayal was the father to kill himself and his wife. Hence, Yanis. There's the 66 again, and if you think this is an accident, then you still may be in the dark in terms of how these films are constructed. We just pull them out and show them to you in a montage so that you can see what this all means. But there's the 66 right there again. Of course, there's Trump Tower and the 66 floor penthouse. Apollyon. The two-faced Roman god come to life. It wasn't God who gave me this face. In 42 seconds, the United Kingdom will re-enter the Stone Age. A worldwide financial meltdown. It was you setting the time as... So obviously, that's exactly what's happening right now. They're pinning CV-19 on it as to the reason for the worldwide economic meltdown but we all know what's happening right now it's all been constructed three minutes instead of six am i supposed to feel sorry for you no you're supposed to die for me now that is a reference to the christ sacrifice one dying for the other and this is the cryptic part about the janus archetype god is it he tries to be like the Most High, and by the end of the show, I'm going to show you that. He wants to be like the Most High. He wants to basically have a father and a son, one dying here on Earth, above and below. Everything the devil does is a duplicate copy, a counterpart, so that he can deceive the masses. He tries to take on these godlike qualities God's history, everything about God, he tries to impersonate. And Janus is no different. Janus wants to be the Alpha and the Omega. But he can't because God and his son are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning from the end, the timeless ones. Let's keep watching. Now, this next part is all about frequencies. And um, this, we've got this whole 5G whiz component to all this now. The Arecibo telescope is front and center in this film, okay? And Arecibo is in Puerto Rico, and uh, it measures radio waves, but it also can measure microwaves, electromagnetic waves, you know, like 5G whiz. Let's keep watching. And there's that 66 again at the longitude coordinate of the Arcebo Observatory. None of this is by accident. And they actually dedicated this upgrade to the Arcebo telescope on Trump's birthday. And 
And of course, Trump has now become the space president. Talking about return trip to the moon, uh, the space force, everything is space with Trump. Golden Eye. Now, what you're going to see next are shots from the Arecibo telescope, and I found something pretty amazing. Now, Arecibo is the largest radio telescope antenna in the world, and it's constructed in a way that seems to mimic the story of the fallen angels. Watch. Now, you can call this the fall of the sun to earth. That's the counterpart, right? But obviously, this is the dark side version. This is the fallen ones falling to earth, right? That's why Christ had to come. He had to correct the imbalance. You can call it the force. You can call it whatever you want. But it's universal balance of good versus evil. Christ had to come back down and correct the incorrect, right? So they're depicting that here. The Christ-like character would be Pierce Brosnan. The dark side character is Jonas. And he falls back to Earth. And there you see the I, like the I am Jesus was, right? There's the cross. It becomes the back part of the helicopter where he was crucified, right? Watch this. Does he actually fall through the cross? Let's take a look here. Look at this. He goes right past the cross there. Bam. And in the antenna above, you see, I am spelled out with the cross. Can't make this up, you guys. There's the fall right there. Into the convex lens earth, except it's concave, right? So it's all opposites. The earth is actually concave. Like a mound, but this is a reverse mound. Starting to get what's going on now. Who writes this stuff? The fallen ones write this stuff. Now let's get back into Janus. Because there's more. I talked to you earlier in the show about this great gate named after Janus. The gate was called Geminus, like Gemini. And it acted as a wall, just like Trump's wall. Let's type in the gate here, see if we can find it. Here in the article. Gatekeeper. Look at all these gate references. Look at this. And here it is on the coin. Minted in. Can you guess the number? 6 AD. Now. Are you starting to understand that the 66 is very important? And it is real. It's not a figment of our imagination. It's not a stretch. It's not made up. This is real. And this is why Trump's penthouse is on the 66th floor. He's channeling this demon. He's channeling it. And he knows it. 
and the people in power know it. There are some images of Bifron, the two headed god. Let's go back to this coin here. There it is here, minted in 66 AD. So, what's up with this gate? Well, this gate was opened during times of war. As you can see here, the Geminis Gate. And closed, they would close the gate during times of peace. Now, the article continues. It says, these two pillars would be at the origin of the theology of the divine twins. One of whom is mortal, related to the northeast pillar, nearest the northern region where the sun does not shine. And the other is immortal, related to the southeast pillar and the southern region where the sun always shines. So this is the story behind the gate, the divine twins, which of course people that follow and know about Gemini know that it is the twins, the divine twins. Now, there's also a Q aspect to this outside of the obvious, which is in 007, there is a Q character. He's the guy who basically puts together all of the contraptions and devices that 007 uses. His name is Q, okay? But there's a Q aspect to Janus as well. One of his names, he has many, is Curinus. Janus Curinus. You can see how many times this Q is appears and Q is a relatively um, a relatively uh, what do you call it rare letter right but yet here you see Quirinius appears many many times in this Wikipedia article regarding Janus Now, in prophecy, Quirinius gets the last conclusive spoils of the Roman victory. Let's take a look here. And history. The compound Iannis Quirinius is to be found also in the rite of Spoili op Opima. A Lex Regia ascribed to Numa, which prescribed that the third rank spoils of a king or chief killed in battle, those conquered by a common soldier, be consecrated to Ianus Curinus. Interesting, right? Schilling believes the reference of this rite to Ianus Curinus to embody the original prophetic interpretation, which ascribes to this deity the last and conclusive spoils of Roman history. Many people believe that Trump is the last president, the last spoils of Roman history. Now, who wrote about Janus? Well, none other than Ovid, which sounds like COVID-19, right? He was one of few historians that wrote about Janus. Here you see him mentioned all throughout. In fact, he's mentioned 58 times in this Wikipedia page. 58 times Ovid is mentioned. That would be the 58th floor Trump Tower. The 58 rooms at Mar-a-Lago. The 1958 Western. Oh, it's actually not mentioned 58 times. Apparently, Ovid appears in the word provided. So, no connection there. Now, what else do we have here? Well, if you think this is all a stretch, look at this article that talks about Janus and CV-19. We covered this in a previous show. I think it was yesterday's show. 
And this particular article compares the VC's design, as you can see here in the title here, to Janus. Because there's a good side and a bad side to it. There is its face right there. Now it's all starting to connect together. There's even a face covering. A face covering. A veil. This is crazy. It says here, let's start from the beginning. The epithet Curatius is found in association with Eunos Surya as des designating the deity to which one of the two altars behind the Tigilium Sororium was dedicated. Festus and other ancient authors explain Curatius by the etiological legend of Tigilium, the expiation undergone by P. Herodias after his victory over blah 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 by walking under a beam with his head veiled. The young hero with his head veiled passes under this beam. The veiled head of Herodias could be explained as a... So there's all this veiled references, which is like our face coverings. Now, there's also a Saturn reference in here as well. Janus and Saturn mentioned together all throughout this article father time chronos so now you have it janus is justinian is apollo is trump is gemini now i'm going to close out the show today with this screenshot from the tv series nosferatu many of you have asked me to look at this and I'm just now picking this up. I'm into season two. The screenshot appears. This series is about Father Christmas, who promises the children that he abducts, he promises them eternity in Christmas land. This is Christmas land right here. Never ending fun, no responsibilities, amusement rides, eat all the candy you want. But in return, he harvests their souls. He draws energy off of them by putting them in the back of his car, which is a Rolls-Royce Wraith, 1938. And as he drives them around, they have the energy sucked out of them in the life. Then they're imprisoned in Christmas land. And in turn, Nosferatu becomes timeless and lives forever like a time traveler. As long as he can keep harvesting these children. Now he justifies this by saying that these parents are horrible. And that if he allows the children to stay with their parents, the children will go grow up corrupted and ruined. And he believes that Christmas land is the place that they should be. And all this should be sounding familiar. Because this is exactly what the elite are doing right now. Now I want you to look at the blocks. Look at the blocks on the left of your screen. And we're going to blow this up. Because this is very important. And you will see exactly what we just talked about this entire show. Biff. Right there. B B I F. Biff. And the devil wants to raise himself above the Most High, which is Jove, or another name for God, Jova. Now, we're probably the only ones that caught this, because no one believes that the devil's in the details. They think that that's just some kind of you know, schizophrenia or something. But here it is. Biff, Biffy, could be his nickname, elevating himself above the Most High, Jova. See this? Now, we'll be back on here tomorrow 
and the rest of the week with more live shows. I haven't even checked in on you guys yet. This exact same time, tomorrow's show is going to be all about a John Hopkins spamdemic scenario. And this was published before the spamdemic came out, before CV came out. This was published. And they talk about a spamdemic scenario. And they talk about a VC that goes out around the world that everybody takes. And they talk about how it turned children mentally disabled. Yep. Hiding in plain sight. And the day after that, our show will be on a Star Trek episode called The Naked Time. That show was in 1966. There's that number again. And in that episode, you hear Spock say 666. He says it. I did a montage on that. We'll basically review the montage and decode it and break it down even further. Anytime you see a shorter video on this channel, it's usually a montage that we'll expand on and talk about more in a live show. Live shows are always at this exact same time every morning during the week. Now, this Star Trek episode is interesting that we're going to cover day after tomorrow because it's the first time that the Enterprise is able to time travel using warp speed, right? Kind of like Operation Warp Speed. Now, that in itself doesn't really ring a bell, but when you consider the fact that the episode is all about a serum, a VC that's used that they have to quickly bring to market, right? They got to quickly bring this to market, quickly get everybody inoculated on the ship before the ship crashes into the planet below. This novel disease that spreads through the ship and it causes the crew to go insane. And Bones, the doctor, he finds the serum. He says, we got to get this thing out to the entire ship as quickly as possible. In the episode, they repeat the number 19 twice. 19 minutes until destruction and 1900 hours. Now, the creepy thing is that the only way to save the ship is to mix matter with antimatter in the warp drive. And I believe that, that what that represents is the mixing of the DNA. You can't make this stuff up, you guys. Mixing of the DNA. Real matter with antimatter. That uh, causes them to reach these very high speeds, which causes them to travel in time 71 hours which is the opposite of 17, which is Q, right? 17, 71. They actually mentioned the number 17 as well in Spock's own words, in case you didn't understand what 71 hours meant. And this goes on and on and on. So let me go in the chat. Appreciate everybody showing up to the show. Again, we'll be here every day this week. Let's answer some questions in here. Thought you would become an elder of God's real congregation, says ABC. You know, um, I grew up just like all of you guys, nothing too different. I guess I, I felt like I could see things, but never knew that I could become part of this. But here's the thing. This is for everybody. What happens is when you are born again and you believe in Jesus and you reach the low point in your life, usually it's this couple with, and you ask him to sh reveal to you the truth. Then all of a sudden these choices and decisions start emerging in your life. And you have to decide who you will follow. And you, they become very defined. They become very real, these choices. And one by one you make choices that bring you closer to God. Now it's not a perfect journey. You know, it's difficult at times. You give up everything. You actually pick up your cross. You drop everything. Material things become nothing to you. You don't gather things anymore. In fact, you're trying to get rid of things, right? Shed away all these things that pull you down. And as you begin to shed away all the things that pull you down and take you away from God, He starts revealing all these things to you. And anyone can do this. But very few find the road because we're consistently weighed down by the things that pull us down. 
So I, all my time is invested in the Most High and all this stuff. People can criticize the channel and say, why are you looking at the dark things? We're not looking at the dark things. We're look Well, they are dark things, but what we're looking at is the mainstream media. These are not like horror films or whatever. These are. This is what everyone is watching and, and filling their minds and brains with. It's everything around us from the ruler of this world. And unless you know what you're looking at and know how it's deceiving you, you'll continue to be deceived over and over and over again. Why not understand what you're looking at and how it's deceiving you so you can run to the arms of Jesus? I love each and every one of you. We'll be back on here bright and early tomorrow. Take care and be safe, everybody.